Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled Chasing Chaotic Butterflies. And I would like to talk about very specifically where existence is heading. But before that, I want to make it clear that I am talking to the children of man. I am not talking to the people who are hearing me. I am talking to the children of man because the children of man will soon be born in states of consciousness where <clears throat> their memory will be uh, activated the minute we have that collective agreement. So you see that the, the, the pilots of consciousness are recognizing that they are an emanation of a greater harmony, a very observant harmony, existential harmony. And so then you simply become a person who is always listening to every movement in life. And so you are always silent. You, you have this inner piece of silence where you're observe, observant of the uh, spectrum and even all that the spectrum can be. <clears throat> so this is a state of knowing. It is simply you remembering who you are. Now, we find that we have trees. And so some trees are very old. And some are very new and there are some seeds that have not yet been planted yet. We need to recognize that this is the system of consciousness we're exploring into. What that means is that we have some people who are suddenly realizing themselves in new ways. And so their memory is simply a greater existential awareness. So when there's a greater existential self-awareness, you will see that the minute, the instant that your vision, suddenly you get that cognition, you get that knowing, suddenly worlds have been allowed to you. So how you are aware of yourself is very crucial when studying the dynamic movements of form, especially of your plane of existence. Chasing chaotic butterflies really means that you have looked at your intelligence that is the normal you. And you, there is a part of you that knows I can be more. I can, not more in a physical way in a sense, but in just, a, I can be in a greater state of knowing and awareness. So this greater state of knowing is nothing that is externally related. And if you choose to make the concepts of your spirituality and give them too much shape, you will see that they will immediately become hollow because that attention is a sensitivity to life. The minute you come out of that range, you're, you're, you're not mindful. You're that person running around with, it, with their shoelaces on time. There requires a sense of mindfulness in how you navigate into different observances of self. And different observances of self means that you could be the point in the center of the circle or you could be the 360 degrees. You could be the circumference that encompasses it and is aware of it as well. You know, in a sense they are the same, <coughs> holistically. So, what we realize right now that everything that man knows is just one language in a multi-dimensional reality. What that means is that everything that you're certain of is simply because this is the room you're looking at. Of course the room is the room, you know? That's all you can do in the room. But if you become aware of yourself to a degree that you are, you have the Zen master's peace. You have the elegance of the wise man and you have the compassion of someone who does not seek praise and in a sense does not take anything else as well. In other words, you're not in the boxing ring, so don't think you're getting punched. <laughs> your reality is your involvement with life. It's a beautiful thing to be aware of. And the minute you trust yourself by recognizing that yourself has unknown aspects, so you are required to trust the unknown to explore it, then your mind is no longer an individual mind. You will see that every act, it doesn't matter whether you're giving a, a speech uh, in front of the UN or if you are eating, let's say, cereal, you know? The same intensity and uh, uh, awareness to form and life is present. You see, man has an ability to accelerate his views and jump into his more liquid bodies. And these liquid bodies simply does not mean that they are your bodies. It simply means that this is man's exploration. This is where man is seeing what else is he more than physicality, because physicality is fluctuating in new ways. Because infinity had a twist. <laughs> and so all symbols, in a sense, are your symbols 
then dissolve into the symbol of other, then dissolve into the awareness of the greater symbol. And then after you aware, are aware of the greater symbol, then you realize that this has been all your searching with your eyes open. What if your eyes were closed, you know? So when a man seeks his world with open eyes, he realizes after you've searched the whole physical dimension, you're internalized. What do you know? What is your sense of abstract? Is creativity simply a definition or is it simply your intelligence and your involvement with life that amplifies you? That your intuition becomes your immediate organizing factor so you no longer think uh, about your organization. You no longer need planning because you are intuitively in the present. So you are simply your attention and ability can go then on concentrating on handling the present moment. So let's say uh, a normal person <clears throat> wakes up in the morning, right? Now what I'm suggesting that that normal person has a possibility to wake up in the morning and see that there's a lot of plans and you use your mind. In other words, stop uh, not reading. Do you know what I mean? Like you should, you should begin uh, absorbing knowledge and learning man's sciences immediately. And you should do it wondrously because that is the state of an advanced communicator of life because you are an advanced communication, because you realize that regardless of the individuality, you have the collective vision to organize all shapes into a bubble that's about to burst. And so when it does, chasing chaotic butterflies becomes <laughs> your hobby. <laughs> and what that really means is that it is as if your mind can work with different intensities of seeing very big patterns in small patterns and very uh, and seeing in very small patterns very big patterns. You're creating an ability in your pattern recognition uh, and let's just say this is your neural networks you know warming up okay so this is an awareness so you in other words your physicality is kept and it's as if your hands are still there the clay is not made every moment there is change there's uh, there's there's a greater understanding of your meaning in life so when passion shows itself, immediately become compassionate. And that passion will come to you. You will see that genius was never a shape. Genius was such an expressive and intelligent state of being in which you looked at the human being and you would see in his eyes, he's no longer just a human being, he's the cosmos looking at itself, looking back at itself. You, you will see that ability. You know, and so uh, <laughs> many lions who are buying <clears throat> wool from, you know, society and culture and putting it around their shoulders to be like sheep because that's the newest fad is a ridiculous idea because I want to hear the lions roar. What that means is that when I saw in that Animal Planet uh, channel a lion roar, I also immediately saw how powerful it would be if a bunch of lions roared at the same time. And so, when you know the ability of the lion, you will wake the lion up. Life will wake you up. When, when you recognize who you are and the ability you have, everything in existence runs to you to wake you up. <laughs> because a lion doesn't need to think about wool. Because he is so involved and so engaged in wool. Roaring what? Advanced realities of, of inspiration. What that means is man is not saying, I am a spiritual being. Man is saying, I am, a, I am a movement into my inspiration. And so spirituality and inspiration, when they become synonymous, the study of self becomes important. And when one dissolves into the importance of getting to know yourself, because all the definitions of other people you have are coming from within you, are coming from you, then you will see that some classes are worth suddenly running to and not missing. You want to be present in your reality, and you are. So simply remember and let a natural existential smile come. In other words, if you want to know if you're enlightened or not, I, I do not want to create that sense of measurement. I simply want to say an elevated mind, an advanced communicator, his beginning step is to, in a sense, be able to sit down and just be in life and observe things to a point where there is no need to externally change things or even after discovering the internal realms, even internally changing things because you are
the presence of the presence. You are the calm in the storm. And so you will see that when you know you are the calm in the storm, you cannot be the darkness that is created temporarily by moving clouds, you know? So. <laughs> and really realize who you are because chasing chaotic butterflies does not just become a simple memory but you can see instantaneously within your stillness of knowing within that moment where a smile has given you the check mark of elevation when you have simply sat down in life and absorbed and you've just seen that you are so just happy existing just being present in life and how every action is, is, is your presence, you will see that you're always clear because you're never holding on to anything that can create an illusion. You're that state of knowing where you are an advanced communicator because there's no longer a need for advancement. That advancement is present. You're tapped into that intelligence, that self-intelligence. And so your individual will be embraced by your collectivity the minute you know who you are. Because very playfully, we can choose to look at the butterfly from a distance, this chaotic butterfly, or we can choose to, in a sense, have an ability with the concentration to, in a sense, visualize, for example, ourselves on the back of this butterfly. And this butterfly has become as big as our garden, for example. And as we are on the back of this butterfly, the movements become chaotic. And so we may judge, for example, a moth to be a simple creature. But if you were on the wing of that moth, you would see the intensity of the crazy worlds this moth is doing just to try to find its light, just to go towards its warmth. When you look at simple things, shouting out the meaning of life, and the meaning is to dissolve into your expression, you will see the advancement of greater eyes. You will be present in states of being where you see there is no reason to ever give yourself incapability or even images of it. You will immediately, and e even though if suffering and pain comes, you're immediately absorbed in, in a sense of omnipresent and collective observance of that individual aspect of your spectrum of duality. Because stop signs are there to communicate something, but a stop sign does not have a mind. So a stop sign is something in which you must see that you are putting the intelligence there. So stop asking the external world for answers when within you, you are the answer. And so as we skydive off this chaotic butterfly, we See that we have come back to the present moment with a knowing that we have an ability to, in a sense, be very creative and very expansive in our vision when we allow it to be integrative with life's harmonies. And life's harmonies means that if you are thinking that your idea needs help, then you have not looked into the existential mirror that cannot be an idea. In other words, what you are seeing in it. The clarity of your sight <clears throat> is not something that should even be ridiculed or questioned or tried to, in a sense, uh, confront it, you know? Because it is, it is elusive. It is elusive as if you, you, you chose to come to your office to work the whole day, but suddenly you see you're doing something else, for example. It is very important that when you say, it is my time, in other words, if I am saying that I'm doing an action, I'm going to do this with a very, intense concentration a concentration that has the intensity of perhaps zeus's eyes when he is throwing lightning i guess you know <laughs> you know you will you will see your reality being one that does not require um a s senses of stagnant self in other words you're like Okay, I don't want to keep calling myself this profession because I see that when I look at different professions, I can apply the, the knowings of this, the skills I have to this other area where I can develop skills, you know? 
an integrative mind will see that it, it, it might become a bit hard to live in a very uh, separated world, but it's not really hard because your integration is an internal awareness and externally just walk your walk. Be comfortable, play around. It is okay to party, but after you have had the preparation of perhaps every great leader of man, you know, and that preparation is a trust in life that you know where you are. And I hope that once you chase the chaotic butterfly and you find it, that there's a moment you're about to touch it, you will see that the moment you're t you're, you touch the uh, chaotic and non-linear intelligence of your existential awareness, you will suddenly look back and you will see all orders change because you have an ability to, in an instant, be any presence of order. And this is, of course, in your subtler realms because imagery is permitted to move a bit faster and so man is a, a very interesting phenomenon. I'm still trying to think of how we can connect the relationship of um, mind to exactly these uh, greater states of awareness which man now is getting an ability to observe himself from. What that means is that you have confronted reality to the degree that you are now becoming it. You are becoming all that you have observed in a knowing that is inspired to be the minute it knows itself. And remember, be very compassionate to all beings, including yourself. The Buddha said, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. So recognize that you need to be very allowing and compassionate to yourself. Because right now, you, some people allow themselves to tolerate, like let's say, for example, um, you know, bad service in restaurants. But you need to have such an existential tolerance as awareness, as a selfless knowing, that you will see that your physical form and shape can change and you must be uh, able to be a playful dancer or that drunken master who always knew how to kick. <laughs> Much blessings and always through the beauty of the design of your finding, remember yourself. Namaste.